how do you know you even have HPV, and what is it? What if you have genital warts? Well, stick around and I will share with you all you need to know about HPV and cervical cancer. Well, welcome to Women's Healthcare Answers. I am Jeff McQuarrie, a Tennessee gynecologist. I want to focus on you, especially if your gynecologic problems are dominating your life and you want to take back control. You can solve your problems with answers and solutions I will give you. Have you ever been told you have high-risk HPV or even have an abnormal pap smear? Do you know what to do? Well, let me be your guide into the world of HPV. Stay till the end to learn much more about the HPV vaccine so I can dispel the concerns you might have about that. What is HPV? HPV stands for human papillomavirus. It consists of a family of small DNA viruses, and these are, there's different types that infect the skin, and it acts differently because it does not change a lot like the COVID virus did, which was an RNA virus. Smallpox, herpes, and chickenpox are examples of diseases caused by DNA viruses. But HPV is very similar to those other viruses because they can stick around for years. The most common sexually transmitted infection in the U.S. with 14 million infections per year are diagnosed in the U.S. alone. In fact, 45% of all women in the U.S. will test positive for HPV at some point in their lifetime. But remember, it's not HIV, which is AIDS, or HSV, which is the herpes virus. It is a distinct virus from those. But HPV has more than 200 different types of viruses, but only 40 of those types infect the genital area. This is what we are most concerned about today. There are different types being low risk and high risk. Low risk types cause genital warts and have a minimal risk of cancer. Whereas the high risk types, as you would expect from the name, carry with them the biggest risk of causing precancer and cancer. But how do you get HPV? Well, it's typically spread by having vaginal, oral, or anal sexual intercourse with someone who has the virus. The virus can be spread even without the affected person knowing they have it. You can get infected without them having any symptoms at all. So it's really important to understand that. But what gives you the greatest risk for getting HPV? And doctors call this risk factors. Well, sex without a condom is very important and multiple sexual partners. Also wounds or broken skin where the virus can get in. But also just contact with contagious warts will give you HPV, but probably not at the high risk kind. So a real big issue though is routinely smoking or chewing tobacco. Tobacco weakens the immune system and can make you more susceptible to HPV and cancer in general. But also a compromised immune system from diseases such as HIV, or you could be taking medications to suppress your immune system intentionally, uh, such as if you've had an organ transplant. But really, overall poor health will increase your risk of getting it. What are the HPV symptoms? When you get infected, it can be years before you even know you have HPV. If you ever got cancer, it could be decades after first getting the virus. But really the good thing is, 90% of new infections become inactive within two years because your immune system can defeat the virus. Certainly a case for staying healthy. But pap tests are also important to look for abnormal cells in the cervix that could contain HPV. You should get a pap at age 21 and every three to five years after that, depending upon how many risk factors you have as we talked about earlier. PAP tests typically stop at around the age of 65. We can also test for HPV at the time of PAP test or even by itself. You may even detect you have genital warts, and this can be distressing but can be a sign you have contracted other types of HPV. Warts are not cancer and can easily be treated in the office or uh, with home medications. What are the types of cancer caused by HPV? We are talking mostly about the risk for cervical cancer, obviously, but other types of cancers can be caused by HPV. 
are anal, vaginal, vulvar, the outside of the vaginal area, cancers of the back of the throat, and the male penile cancer, which we will really not talk about today for obvious reasons because I'm a gynecologist mainly. So if you like this video so far, hit the like button. I hear that it really helps with YouTube. And please subscribe because I just couldn't make it if you missed any of my new medical videos coming out every week. Who am I going to talk to? I need you here. It keeps me going and I want to help you, so please come back and comment. So back to the information you want. How can you avoid HPV? Well, get PAPS tests and HPV screening. Use condoms correctly every time and protect yourself as much as you can. But remember, any genital contact can transmit HPV even, even if your partner is wearing a condom. So number one is to be in a monogamous relationship So because it's just easier. But if you can't do that, number two is get the HPV vaccine in case you are eventually exposed. What is the HPV vaccine? Well, in the US, we use Gardasil 9 vaccine, and that covers nine of the most common low and high risk virus types. It covers two low and seven high risk. Who should get the vaccine? It is approved by the US FDA for use in males and females as early as nine years old, but is typically given between the ages of 11 and 12. Doctors will vaccinate up to the age of 26, but the vaccine can even be given up to the age of 45. And, and this is taking into consideration those risk factors we talked about earlier. What is the effectiveness of the HPV vaccine? According to cancer.gov, research trials that led to approval of Gardasil 9 found it to be nearly 100% effective in preventing cervical, vulvar, and vaginal infections and precancers as well, caused by all seven cancer-causing HPV types that it targets. That is very significant. What is the dosage and how is HPV vaccine given? Well, it's typically given in two separate doses about six months apart, and this is really what's recommended most of the time. But three doses should be given over the age of 15 or if your immune system is compromised. But also one dose is better than none and this is recognized by the World Health Organization, but really not by the US FDA. What if you know you have already had HPV? Should you get the vaccine? Well, getting it will not hurt you, but it could help you prevent getting any other types of high-risk HPV, so I think it's a good idea. It can also benefit you even if you have HPV because some research studies have shown even a regression of precancer. So we certainly recommend it. What are the common concerns about HPV vaccine? Well, there's often lack of education about vaccines and cervical precancer and cancer. And this can often be because doctors have little time for these difficult discussions. You need the information though. But parents also get concerned that getting the vaccine will encourage sexual behavior in their children. And that has not been shown to really be the truth but your kids will eventually be sexually active whether you like it or not. Too many vaccines, yes. It is just one more of many, I understand. How safe is the vaccine? Gardasil 9 was approved by the FDA for use in 2014, and the safety of the Gardasil 9 was studied in clinical trials with more than 15,000 participants before it was even licensed to be released. So it was really highly studied unlike obviously our COVID-19 vaccine initially. During the first five years of use, 28 million doses were distributed with very minimal risks noted. So the good thing is it continues to be monitored and it's continued to be safe for over nine years. As a side note, the vaccine does not affect fertility and is safe before you're trying to get pregnant. What are the common side effects? Pain, redness, or swelling in the arm where the shot was given, and that's a common side effect of any shot, as well as fever because of your immune system being activated. But it can also cause some headaches or feeling tired, nausea, muscle or joint pain, and even dizziness. Who shouldn't take the vaccine? Well, obviously, if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine, don't take it. Don't take it again. So if you've taken one dose and, and had that reaction, don't take another. But if you're pregnant, don't take it. 
And if you have an allergy to yeast, you should talk to your doctor. It may not be recommended. So I want you all to understand that cervical and HPV related cancers are a significant national and worldwide health issue. The Gardasil 9 HPV vaccine is safe and effective in preventing cervical and other cancers. And it really is estimated that the vaccine could prevent up to 40,000 new cases of HPV related cancers and could even virtually eliminate cervical cancer over time. So even if you have a prior infection, you should be offered the vaccine and take it. And definitely talk to your doctor about ways you could also prevent HPV infection. Hopefully you feel you learned something. And as always, I have enjoyed being here with you. I would love to help you solve your problems at Women's Healthcare Answers. Remember this video is meant for information purposes only. Please consult your own healthcare provider, but it is okay to reference the information I gave you.